Welcome to episode 369 of the Clive Barker podcast and the 14th episode of our Dungeons and Dragons game, Jericho Squad 77, set in the capital city of Isordorex in the Second Dominion. Today, Squad 77 meets a new team member and they decide to split the party with disastrous results. And now here's Bentley Widget to fill you in. Just a few months ago, Squad 77 was led by my friend Cassius Breyer. Together we went on a dangerous mission where just about everyone was killed. Everyone but me and Cassius. Cassius left the squad and I had started recruiting more people. It's hard to find people for such a dangerous job, but we had got a seer kind named Musette, a Eredemek named Churdovir, a Zoe, a cleric of a goddess I'm not familiar with, and Ralph, a nightbreed lizard person wrapped up in the severed hand of his god. And let's not forget the talking magical seabird. All this weird stuff just par for the course with the organization we work for. The new squad had discovered that Cassius Breyer had started a dangerous movement called the Aboriginal Children, and that he's the one who caused the deaths of the original Squad 77 and several other squads as well. Through some weird circumstances, the group ended up banishing him to hell, and now we've just been broken into by a bunch of Nullianaks and Oviats and trying to get Chertovir's prophetic device, the Boston Bowl. All right. Well, welcome to uh, the Clive Barker podcast. Hello, everybody. We're back. Hi. We haven't had a Jericho Squad game in like uh, two months now. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So this is it. And everybody's forgetting how to do it. And um, we're still <laughs> uh, we're still struggling a little bit with stuff coming up and and everything. Uh, Brant is out uh, hunting for moose right now. <laughs> OK. Yeah. And uh, and uh, Lori Ralph wishes something. he was with Brant. <laughs> Lori had something come up, uh, but we will soldier on. And I'd like to do another game here soon, so we can kind of bring those the, uh, them back in uh, if we can. But we'll deal with that after this one. Uh, so this is our fourteenth episode of Jericho Squad seventy seven. Okay. On the outskirts of Isordorex, while Squad seventy seven slept. Their home base of operations was invaded by Nullianax and Oviat creatures. Their goal seemed to have been Chertovir's Boston Bowl. Through some clever illusions and deadly fights, the group was victorious, and now Bentley, Widget, and Musette make breakfast, while Bustle and Pancake try to get rid of the bodies. Uh, Chertovir and Jonathan Livingston Seagull head for the library, your Hedemek Arcanum, to find an enchantment that will help protect the door from further intrusion. So that's where we're at. Uh, I remember. Uh, yeah. So, so um, stupid bowl. <laughs> yeah. You saved so, it. So, Chernivir, um, as you're driving uh, about an hour down the road, uh, you hit a bump, and Jonathan kind of flies up in the air a, a little bit. He circles around and sees something, and he flies off. Okay. So, well, yeah. Hopefully, I, I he'll look up and I'll go like. Hey, catch up later. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully he'll catch up with you later. Um, so, and uh, Musette, you were helping uh, Bentley with breakfast. Zoe is upstairs guarding the, the door that seems to be smashed in. And Ralph, what were you up to? I'm just generally being perturbed waiting on my breakfast. <laughs> okay. Um, no. All right. Good deal. I don't even, I, I lost track of what happened to the Boston Bowl because yeah. uh, I think that was uh, kind of ridiculous. I think Chirdovir well, Ch has it on him. Yeah. 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 Next time I find that thing, I'm going to use it as a toilet. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you look into the future and all you can see is brown. Oh. Ah. <laughs> yeah. I see uh, a big hand that. squeezing some brown onto the bowl. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yuck. Okay. Um. So, <laughs> Turdivir, it's going to take a couple hours for you to get there. Uh, you've been driving for one hour right now. Uh, the rest of you are just sitting down to breakfast. Um. 
and uh, because it seems to be in high demand, it's waffles again. Uh, B- Bentley, um, a- a- as you're eating, Bentley kind of puts his his hands on his ears and uh, and he says, "Hold on, just a second. And uh, he he goes o- off into his room uh, to continue a conversation that must be coming from one of the uh, one of the Jericho phones type things. So, what do you guys want to do? Eat breakfast in silence. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> probably vent we right. still don't have a vcr do we no because a flipping pancake and bustle mm. and i don't care what you what they say oh they made us money no i would rather have the vcr the vcr is more valuable this will be an ongoing thing bentley until the vcr is replaced Just so bustle and pancake kind of stick their heads out of the you know poke their heads up from cleaning up the bodies and they say you know uh i looked up the value of those things on on your world and it's not much and then they go back to uh they go back to cleaning no. well bustle and pancake don't have feelings so they don't know <laughs> the worth of emotional value <laughs> We can get a lot more out of a VCR than, you a know, a pancake and a bustle. Than a pancake. Mm. Anyway, all we have is Jerry Maguire, in it, so yeah. What the hell is it? <laughs> what's oh, what's on the docket? And and uh, what are we so doing? Is it, well, you you guys, you said you're sitting at breakfast silently, which makes great uh, great podcasting. <laughs> no, we've been complaining about pancake bustle and VCRs now. All right, we said we and... weren't we weren't going to do anything, but then it turned into complaining. So okay. we lied. <laughs> All right, and uh, Zoe is uh, Zoe is quiet. Yeah. So anyway, when's Chodavir getting back? I don't know. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm focused on this pancake or this uh, waffle. These waffles. Yeah. I I don't think you. I don't think Ralph. I don't think you've ever actually been to the library. I just never been to the library. I've never had friends to take me. I don't even know where it is. You might still be kind of sore about the whole Boston Bull situation. I don't know. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, after the you know the Boston Bull is just like that stupid spider. Oh yeah, actually he's pretty I smart. I saved the spider. Remember, I went and helped a brother out, and what would he do? He left me to drown. Story of my life. So after a couple of minutes, Bentley comes back to the table and he says, "Hey, uh, I've I've got some uh, bad news and some really bad news. So which one do you want to hear first? Really bad news." Okay, uh, the really bad news is that Cassius Briar somehow escaped from hell. It's <laughs> great. Uh, there, there's a little bit of good news that comes with that. Uh, Jericho is sending someone to help us hunt him down. Um, and actually, as soon as we're finished eating, we should probably set up the transport to bring him in because, uh, uh, I think we're going to need his help. Okay. Mm. So what's the bad news? Uh, the bad news... Well, there's kind of a long story that goes along with this, but Squad 77 was supposed to be meant to guard the, all the rest of the reconciled dominions, right? From the f- fourth all the way to the first. And they always wanted us to set it up in the fourth dominion at the breach where it where it uh, connects to the fifth dominion and I, and uh, I always put it off because he's order X is my home I don't want to be down there I wanted to be here and there was lots of stuff happening here they would call us out to missions and other places and so it seemed like we were just as useful here as we were down there <clears throat> but t- Bentley hurts my throat <clears throat> but anyway um what ended up happening is they made another squad uh, for the Fourth Dominion, Squad 78 down there. Um, squad 78 sort of resents us because they feel like 
they're doing the job that we're too scared to do. We're not scared to do it. Just I know, I know. I well, we've had lots of stuff going on, but they're really uh, dismissive and um, condescending, I guess you would say, about us. And so, oh. anyway, <clears throat> something new has come up that uh, Darthur City. Uh, no one's heard anything from them uh, in a while. And Darthur City is the closest city to the border of the First Dominion. Um, so now they want to come up here using our transport and use our truck and go investigate Darthur City. Well, we don't have the truck anymore. I mean, it's it's on the road right now, so... What are you talking know. about? <laughs> Didn't Chodavir take the truck? No, he, he took, took the, the motorcycle. motorcycle. Oh, well, then I guess I have no excuses. I guess we're making new friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, I told them that we're not ready for them, that our t transport is broken, um, and that it'll be, you know, give us three days. So they're going to be up here in three days. And they have to accept that because if they were to drive up here from the Fourth Dominion, it would probably take them two weeks to get here. Who are they going to sleep? Or are they just like in and out? I think they're just, they just want to take our truck and go. Wow. I told them we could investigate the First Dominion. We don't need, we don't need their help. We can d deal with it as soon as we get our door fixed. These guys, uh, they act like, you know, it was just some kind of burglar or something is keeping us from being able to do our job. Like I said, they're really condescending, and I've been sort of shielding you from them up up to this point. But uh, now we're going to have to deal with them. Well, it is what it is. Yeah. I mean, the way I look at it, Chodavir is going to freak out when he finds out about Cassius. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, do we do we need the truck right now, or will Not... we be needing it in the next week or so? Maybe. I mean, I, somebody's got to use it to go up to Darthur City. Why don't we just go to Darthur City right now? We can't leave the... Oh, you got Pancake and Bustle here. I mean... Look they, at what happened last time. What else is there to sell well, that we think, care about? I think first thing is we've got somebody waiting uh, for us to set up the transport. Oh, Come okay. Over. Well, then I suppose we better do that. Yeah, if everybody's finished eating, we can uh, do that and get this table moved over. Okay, I'll, I'll start cleaning up. Yeah, and Buzz and Pancake are, have got all the bodies into a, a single pile by the stairs. And that will be my new bed nest. That's gross. <laughs> so? All right. So, yeah, you move the table aside and, and uh, Bentley sets up the uh, transport in the receive mode. Uh, so anyway, while we're waiting on that uh, Chertovir, we can head back to you and the library. So if they've finished eating breakfast, um, I would say you're probably at the library at this point. All right. Okay, and so you remember that you were, you were going there to find an enchantment to... Um, to fix the door but you right. also remember that uh, since you don't get to go visit your own library very often there may be other things you might want to research while you're there there might be some other things i want to research while i'm here <laughs> let, are you, are you... let me let, let me go ahead and search my shelves for stuff okay uh what, what are you looking for I guess I could look into um, what uh, I can discover about the Fifth Dominion's idea of hell, the dimension. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, do you want me to come what, up what, with? Is that just you're just more curious to see how Cassius is doing in hell? No, I'm curious to know, you know, what what hell is, and okay. if I can find anything about Gaustus. Okay. All right, so, uh, make an investigation check. And everybody, okay. this is uh, Matt Williams. Hey, Matt. Welcome. Hey. Hello. 
Okay, uh, everybody, this is Matt Williams, and uh, your oh, character is going to need to make a charisma saving throw uh, for the dangerous trek through the Innovo. We got a 15. Okay. Yeah. Well, you just got, you just saved yourself from being lost in the Innovo. Right. Oh, that would have been treacherous. Yeah, that would have been an awkward, uh, <laughs> awkward introduction. <laughs> Okay, yeah. So um, now make a const. You, you, <clears throat> your body starts to solidify from its glyph uh, back into its normal human form, and um, you arrive and make a Constitution saving throw. Uh, Twenty-five. Okay, yeah. You're you're uh, you feel a little bit queasy, but you're all right. Um, uh, I've been through this kind of stuff before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, Matt, if you want to describe uh, describe your character to everybody. Um, sure, thank you. Uh, my name is Richard Smitty. I'm an urban bounty hunter. And uh, basically, I've had an assignment where I had to reach out with these guys. So I've got uh, sunglasses, a couple tattoos, and uh, I'm really adept at fighting with two weapons. I've got a pistol and a short sword. So a little bit beefy. Mm -hmm. And as far as that's concerned, I'm, I'm just here to, to kick butt and take names. Looking for somebody right now. Uh, I'll tell you guys about that uh, in a bit. And um, you see, um, you see it uh, standing around you, uh, standing nearby. You see a uh, like a six foot tall, uh, really furry looking guy. He looks a little bit like uh, Chewbacca, except his face is more round. Um, and uh, he, he says, "My name is Bentley Widget. I kind oh, of nice helped run the, this squad. <laughs> you see a, a sort of a blue-tinted skinned uh, person, uh, a woman, and a, uh, a lizard man with a giant hand wrapped around his uh, torso. Oh. And, and are these and see, are these what are you guys are you describing?" My fellow companions here. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Just make sure. I'm not in the room. I'm at okay. a different library. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Hi, I'm Yuzet. <laughs> nice to meet you. That's guys. a Ralph. The lizard dudes are Ralph. Okay. I am Ralph. Yeah. And uh, Musette is Ralph. a seer kind. If your character would even know <laughs> what they are. <laughs> seer kind. Heck yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, and you see a couple of uh, a couple of humans in in sort of shabby clothes, and they are dragging uh, dead bodies around uh, on the ground. Oh my goodness! Yeah, we've had some problems lately. We had a, a break in, and somebody tried to steal an artifact. What artifact? Killed all these people to save some china. <laughs> some china, just some random artifact, eh? Yeah, uh, no, it's a, it's a, um, it's what's called a Boston Bowl. And and uh, back to Chertovir. So the first thing you wanted to look for was uh, you wanted to learn more about hell. Yes, the dimension of hell that the humans call it okay. hell in the Fifth Dominion, and want to know more about Gaustus and you know what uh, what I can expect from from where Cassius Breyer is. All right. Well, make an investigation check. Investigation. Oh, okay. So he and just knows. Investigation check. Rolling through. Oh, I got an 18 plus 6 equal 24. Okay. Yeah. Um, you do find it took you a little bit, and there's only one book that ever even mentions it because it's really more of a concept that. Uh, the people in the fifth dominion are familiar with yeah um but you do find that there's a there's another dimension um it's typically associated in uh, religious religious uh circles with a place that people go to uh for punishment after they die so it's sort of like a reverse afterlife you know or it's the uh it's the bad afterlife uh some and and it whether whether people deserve to go there depends a lot on the different the specific religion and uh it's uh 
that part of it seems really complicated because it seems like the fifth dominion has a lot of religions and a lot of it's based on <laughs> speculation and and uh and uh, you're having a hard time separating fact from fiction based on what you're seeing but uh but you know from your experience now you know that it's a real place um but as far as like uh, how it relates to the afterlife or if it relates at all to it you're not sure and that book's name the holy bible <laughs> <laughs> okay i found the book and uh yeah. cool so i learned about that awesome yeah it, it was more of a it was more of a footnote in in a, an encyclopedia volume about the fifth dominion okay so that didn't really give me a lot of information uh, about yeah. Gaustus. There, there was or... nothing about, yeah, nothing about Gaustus. Does it say anything about demons? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, and and depending on, the, again, d demons and devils, depending on the religion that you know, some sometimes they're fallen angels. Okay. Uh, sometimes they're creatures that are are uh, like the reverse coin of an angel. Um, so, and sometimes they're, they're earth spirits, uh, okay, that are so trapped that gives in me, a... That gives me kind of an angle, um, as to how Gauss, what Gauss this might be and, uh, how I could approach him if I need to communicate with him again. A pop popular fictional trope about devils is that you can bargain with them. Mm -hmm. uh, people people trade their souls for riches oh, yeah. and for a better life on... We did on... that when we met him. Yeah, I put my soul <laughs> on the line. Yeah, and and after uh, after reading what you did, you kind of realize now that maybe that wasn't a good idea. Uh, but at the time, you didn't didn't really know too much about it. Yeah, it gave me were... bug eyes for a while. That was, <laughs> yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, and uh, people weren't happy with uh, with you. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that that's kind of where that's at. Um. It, was there anything else that you want to and you you also remember you're also kind of wondering why uh these these oviat creatures were after the boston bowl um so that's another thing to think about and and the main reason that you arrived there you were looking for an enchantment to fix the door that they busted in right to, to make right. it uh so that it's magically sealed rather than well uh, yeah i imagine that I mean, there's. I don't think there's anything that I can research about why they wanted the Boston Bowl, as I am know a lot about the Boston Bowl and its prophetic powers. I, I feel like they wanted the Boston Bowl to somehow look into the future and find hints of how they could get uh, Cassius Breyer out of hell. Uh, maybe they wanted to use that for their own nefarious purposes. Maybe they wanted to prevent us from knowing something that's going to happen in the future. So my idea is that once I get back to the headquarters, I should probably use the Boston Bowl and try to see uh, the future, what future has in store for maybe Cassius Breyer and the children, okay. the Aboriginal children. Aboriginal if, children, yeah. Yeah. And and uh, that's that's another aspect that uh, you guys don't know a whole lot about is the Aboriginal children. Mm-hmm. I mean, we know it's kind of a political kind of movement a little bit, right? I mean, from what I understand, it's just kind of more of a militia that Cassius Breyer was creating. They're kind of nativists and they're, you know, they don't like people from other dominions. They don't like people from the Fifth Dominion. Do they still worship Apex Mendios? Uh, yeah, yeah. In fact, the, yeah. the Aboriginal the Aboriginal is another name for Apex Mendios. Right. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So um, I just know that... It, a it was a part of. Go ahead. I, I, what I think is that the uh, Aboriginal children is more like a um, religious slash political force that was being manipulated by Cassius Breyer using uh, other creatures from the Inovo as enforcers to just fight the goddesses and try to help them get to power. Uh, but and another thing that you remember also is that there seemed to be their their cult seemed to expand into the fifth dominion. Oh, that's a problem. The the, the sons of the free had uh, changed their name to the Aboriginal children. Oh yeah, that would make sense. Okay, okay. Yeah, the ones that ambushed uh, uh, Ralph and Musette in uh, Midian. Right. Right. And okay. Yeah. 
And well, and you, you, you were there. Yeah, too. I was there. Well, I saw the Sons of the Free in Midian, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you basically were fighting people. They had Except a creature for, uh, yeah. with them. Yeah, and there was a Gekka Gek. That you oh, fought. that was it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what because, I recognized. Because the 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 town uh, the town of Midian went in lockdown mode and transported through the Inovo, and that that kind of hitched a ride. Oh, okay, I get it. Yeah, I remember that. Uh huh. So, um, have I discovered anything? Do I have to do another investigation check on whether I found a spell that will keep the door yes. inviolate? Yeah. Okay. All right, awesome. So, I did find that. So, you know, as I close my books, I go like, well, I guess it's time to get back to headquarters and see if we can seal that place up. No, yeah, I said you do have to roll. Oh, I do have to roll for investigation. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> okay, investigation. I got 14 plus 6 equal 20. Okay, yeah. Uh, with the 20, you, you definitely find what you're looking for, and you happen to know that the library that you're in right now even has a similar system uh, of, of locking that... Uh, you can kind of program it so that only certain people can can open the door from the outside or from the inside. So in one aspect, it's it's locked all the time for everybody, but it's always unlocked for you and for Drovo. Right. Uh, so you, one of you has to be there to open the door for anyone else that wants to go in it, which has been sort of a, a problem for the other Uretimex. They feel like they should have access even when you're gone, and you've been gone quite a bit. Well, I take a lot of pride in this collection so uh we can't just have anybody put their dirty fingers on these books you know what i'm saying so yeah i don't know where drovo is do i uh, well it has it's only been a couple of days and yeah. there's been sort of a political mess uh after after what happened and i think he's with the council so, right yeah they've been they've been trying to vote on whether he's a legitimate um representative of the first dominion since okay. his opponent got killed in the middle of the debate. Um, okay, so... Should they just appoint him? Should they vote again? They're, they've been trying to figure that out. Gotcha. So I guess I'll have to figure out the equivalent, the arithmetic equivalent of putting a gone fishing sign on the door. Um, <laughs> yeah. And let right. them know that, uh, you know, reach out to... <clears throat> reach out to Drovo if you need access. Um I'm going to be out for a while, um, but, you know, I lock the door. Okay. All right. Uh, good deal. And uh, so you and you head back? Yeah, I look around to see if uh, Jonathan has showed up, and I guess he's just out eating trash somewhere. Yeah, or... you thought you saw a bird flying around, but it could have been another bird. You're, yeah. You're not sure. So I'll be like, ah, he'll show up. So I get on my bike with my okay. goggles. Um, All right. Um, here I go back to the headquarters. Okay, so um, back in the uh, headquarters, just to kind of let you know, this is this is what uh, Matt's character, uh, Richard Smitty, this is what he looks like. That's badass, man. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <clears throat> Roughly, I mean, we, we've got uh, we've got Asia working on it right now too. Is that like a bionic implant, or is that just the armor? Uh, well, so whenever I was describing it to the uh, to the AI bot, I just said urban male bounty hunter with sunglasses mm -hmm. and a pistol. Yeah. So in my mind, that's kind of like he's got a pistol kind of put up to his face like that. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? A little bit of attitude yeah. there. Sure. And his sunglasses kind of look like they're going into his skin. It's just because it was AI generated, but I think it kind of looks cool like that. It could be yeah. armor. I it looks pretty cool how the sunglasses don't go all past the ears. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it, it looks like they're just like they're they go into your yeah. flesh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of a little bit like uh, Morpheus on the Matrix when he just kind of yeah. pinched him onto his nose there. Sure, yeah. sure. And, and, and th there's some weird limitations. Like when you say he's got a gun and a sword to an AI bot, it's like, oh, you want a gun sword. Yeah, for sure. I did get a lot <laughs> yeah. of those that look like uh, Final Fantasy and stuff. So Yeah. <clears throat> But no, that's what I came up with. There was the first one I had that I kind of liked. It was like an older version of this guy. And I was like, I didn't really want to play an old guy. I kind of wanted to play uh, this guy. So, yeah. Not like a dog the bounty hunter. 
for sure i kind of i thought about going that way for uh for laps but i was like you know i couldn't commit to a character like that i'd want to be more more like me i would like to play me it's pretty intimidating character yeah i like the tattoos on the face Yeah, brother yeah well i didn't expect to have tattoos on the face but once they generated them on there it looks pretty cool and it kind of looks tribal Mm -hmm. makes him look like he's been around i like it he has been he has been around i'll show you the gun he's been all over There's many sword. stories of this character that only that uh that can be revealed over many drunken nights. Yeah, that was another version that I was thinking about going with right there. Oh, but yeah, that was the gun more sword Blade there. Runner kind of thing <laughs> yeah. for sure. Yeah. I just I'm really impressed with the AI. It makes me feel like I should <laughs> never even attempt to paint anything if the computers can just produce this. <laughs> yeah, my background just has my character. Uh, he's kind of a blade singer, uh, kind of wizard. Um, okay, and he's he's got two irises on each eye. He's kind of bluish, and he's like almost seven feet tall. Two Should irises. Should seven feet tall? I miss that. Well, he's so, tall. He, it reminds me of the guy from the Wheel of Time. Oh, okay. I've seen some of the Wheel of Time. I think Ryan knows more about that than I do. Well, yeah, you know, I've read it. Actually, I've Rob the knows the, the most oh, about Rob. the Wheel of Time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Your brother. Yep. The big ogre is a scholar. I've actually gone to uh, book signings for Rob for the Wheel of Time back when uh, Robert Jordan was alive. Mm. And here's another one. Yeah, that's the oh, old wow. man version right there. Yeah. Cool. Holy crap. That's also pretty cool. Maybe I kind of know my fate, so I kind of feel like I'm going to be a little bit more reckless because I feel like I do live to be this old guy. It, 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 is, it looks like the uh, sunglasses are are like digging into his skin on there. Yeah, I don't think the AI does a good job with sunglasses, but uh, no, they really yeah. don't. But it kind of looks like he's got two sets. Maybe how like a gunslinger has two sets oh, of belts. Yeah, he's kind of got that going on with his glasses there. Uh, yeah. I um, mm. I, that's why I, when I I did some centibytes on uh, on that AI that Mid Journey, and then I uh, I had to Mid-journey. go to Photoshop and fix some stuff. Uh, because, you know, uh, sometimes it would have a big thing coming out of nowhere. Didn't mm-hmm. really mean anything, so I just had to go in and take that out. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if you decide to Photoshop it, you could Photoshop some glasses onto that thing. But uh, it's all good. It's it's amazing how these things are, like, uh, so smart and can I'm create impressed. such uh, amazing uh, uh, drawings, especially if it's simple. So, cool. I'm on my way back driving my bike. Yeah, yeah, and uh, so you guys are kind of uh, free to to talk about what you want to, what you need to do, what you want to talk about. Um, Zoe is un is uncharacteristically quiet. Uh, you also see um, Zoe; she's a, a like a redheaded uh, human woman wearing leather, uh, but she's really quiet because uh, Lori's not here today. Oh well, Zoe's a shy one. She's kind yeah. of standoffish and <laughs> sarcastic. Today. Yeah, today at least. Accent. Yeah, that's true. Hey she's... guys, I've been on this. I've been here. I've been there. I've been everywhere. I just got here. Where are we at right now? Are we are we in California? Where are we? We're at Bentley's, and uh, here we like to uh, eat waffles in the morning, and we kind of do whatever Bentley tells us to do, or he sends us out to go do things. And right now. Uh, our our seven foot friend who likes to read a lot, <clears throat> who doesn't take care of his stuff. Um, he's a uh, he's a uh, we 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 put his uh, brother in hell because he was an asshole. No, and uh, we went through a lot of trials and stuff. And uh, you didn't put my brother in hell. You put yeah, Cassie Spryer. Ben- Bentley, Bentley says, I gotta stop you right there. Uh, you, yeah. You're getting some facts mixed up. Am I? Um, yeah. <coughs> Cassius Breyer was my friend. He was Cassius. my friend. <coughs> but he's not He's not uh, anybody's brother. No. Not that I... Dog the bounty hunter's brother. No. Yeah. You have to forgive me. I, I don't remember things very well. That's okay. But, uh, um, yeah, you're, to answer your question, you're in the second dominion of the reconciled dominions. Mm-hmm. Um, and go ahead and make a, make a, make a history check. 
Uh, um, yeah, yeah I, I rolled a two. Okay, so yeah, you don't know about the reconciled dominions. Okay. Um, but he says, yeah, so the, the fifth dominion is Earth, and there are four other dominions, and they're all interconnected. You're on the second dominion right now in the capital city of Isordorex. <coughs> We're on the outskirts of the city. I kind of look around and dust myself off. Cassius Briar used to uh, used to run this Squad 77 with me, but he kind of went rogue and uh, and started doing his own stuff. He even sabotaged some other squads we just discovered. Mm. Cassius Briar sounds like a bad cookie. Yeah, through some a series of of, of events, ended up somehow sending him to another dimension. Uh, they called it Hell, or the Gulfs. Uh, so that's, that's, um, that's where we had left off until I just heard from, uh, from your squad that he's escaped. So how did they know that, by the way? And why did they tell you before they told us? Well, funny you should mention, I got a phone call just the other day. It was kind of mysterious, and I was talking to this guy, and he let me know about uh, about Cassius Pryor escaping the gulfs. <clears throat> he, uh, he mentioned my tattoos, said that we have a uh, common tattoo artist uh, amongst us and I started thinking about it and you know I think the guy was Harry Demore. Um he didn't as much say but I kind of gathered as much so uh, this guy gave me a shout like I said I know a lot of people so uh, people give me information quite often um, but yeah I was I was made aware of this this briar before I got here I didn't know who he was to you guys so that's why I didn't say anything at first oh I see Huh. Well, um, <coughs> we're we're, we're uh, happy to have you aboard. We could use all the help we can get. Yeah, I I'm generally assigned to a squad. I like to roll solo quite a bit, but uh, I've been by myself for a while. Seeing some uh, some other faces and having some other skill sets is definitely going to come in handy. So at this point, um, you guys are kind of free to do what you want to do or investigate what you want while you're you're uh, waiting for Chertovir to come back. He's probably got another hour and a half or so uh, to get there. Uh, so what do you want to do? I'm going to go do the dishes. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go make a dead body for it. Uh, make a um, make a performance <laughs> check. Is that not what we're supposed to do? You're like, go do anything you want, but not that. <laughs> yeah. go make a performance check for your uh, for your dead body for it. <laughs> so sorry, Ralph. You're making a, a dead body. What? Fort. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's I rolled disgusting. a twenty. Okay. I just well, kind of start backing away <clears throat> from these guys a little bit. Your 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 fort has a kind of uh, uh, it's it's kind of beautiful in a disgusting, grotesque kind of a way, uh, made I out do of. What I does can. it look like the house that Jack built? I hope it <laughs> made does. Made out of dead Nullianax and Gekagex and Voiders. Uh, bustle and Pancake and take a second to admire it, and then they shake their heads and say, "Wait a minute, we're trying to clean these up." and they take your fort apart. This is all perfectly good meat. It's whatever Jonathan would side with me. <laughs> but it is what oh, it is, fine. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, doing the dishes didn't take very long. Well, what I'd like to do is kind of get my bearings and I kind of just step outside and start going, uh, looking, around the, looking around the area to see if there's any place that I can start getting some information. Okay. Uh, when when you step outside, you see that you're um, you, so you have to go upstairs, uh, and then and then out the broken door. And uh, you, what you see outside is uh, basically it's um, these orderx. You can kind of see 
going up a hill, right? It's um, it. Oh, and one thing also, uh, Churuvir, I had forgotten to mention uh, that it occurred to you while you were there that you you know you should probably grab maps of Isordorex and the the reconciled dominions. Okay. So you grab those from the library while you were there. Uh, so anyway, you you see looking up up you see the um, the city is built on an enormous hill and it goes up towards a palace. Uh, the palace looks a little disused and broken down, um, and uh, but it seems like it, just getting up there up that hill uh, because the way the roads are winding, they seem to uh, they seem to wind around and over streams and they don't take direct paths. So it would take a long time to get up to the middle of the city. All right, I noticed this, and I just uh, can. I, are there any people around? Any natives? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. There are people walking around. Um, a lot of them are human, but not all. Uh, you see some, you see some uh, bluish, uh, sort of dwarvish-looking people with big heads and scars on their heads walking around. You see giants uh, that are like nine feet tall. Um. You see, um, uh, sometimes you'll see uh, little uh, rats running around. They're creatures that are like rats, um, but a little bigger. So uh, being new to the Second Dominion and having this being the first time, I kind of just sink back against the wall, keep my shades low and just start observing around me to see if I can uh, just get the feel of the, the language of the people are speaking, just kind of sinking in, you know? And uh, <clears throat> make, a, make an insight check. <clears throat> 14. Okay. Um, what you hear seems to be a pigeon kind of a, a, a combination of English and other languages um, that you're not super familiar with. But, it, you know, it's kind of like every third word you recognize. And so if you if you concentrate really hard, you might be able to kind of get a sense of what people are talking about. But it's not easy. All right. So uh, as I'm just kind of leaning back, I start filing my nails and I start coming up with a plan. I know we're waiting on somebody, so I think I'm just going to sit back here, like I said, and like absorb the atmosphere. OK. And uh, so you guys are just kind of also waiting, it sounds like. Well, I'm just, yeah, you know, pancake and bustle. They've, out of all times in the world, they decide to clean today. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> Just when it happens to be a bunch of corpses around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to actually go back to my room and uh, see if Aldrin is available. Okay. Okay, so, uh, <clears throat> you know, take my little mm. phone and call okay. her. I'm just gonna go dilly dally in the junk and see if I could find stuff to play with until Chodevir comes back. I don't know what to do. Okay. You guys have kind of already sorted through the junk. I mean, as much as you could, and so you've seen everything that was in there. Uh, was you, you? You do remember that you have a sword, and you're the and you. There's now a new guy that can actually use a sword. You may want to consider giving that to him. Hmm. Well, I have been carrying this around. I don't ever use it. Uh, so. Hey, new guy. <laughs> Do you like swords? I, I start, I feel like I hear somebody calling from inside the building. So I, I, I stomp my <laughs> cigarette out and I start heading back uh, down the stairs. Huh? Uh, you guys calling for me? So hey, I have a, I have a lot of stuff that I don't really need. I tend not to use it because uh, I don't know. I like to get my my claws dirty. Um, but 
I was given this this uh this sword. It's uh a luck blade long sword, I think. And uh do you think this might be something that could benefit you? Because I just kind of carry it around and forget about it. Uh, As you can see, I have a giant hand attached to me, so whatever I'm carrying, I just ignore from most of the time. So I, I you remember that, that this this was Cassius Briar's sword. So yeah, Cassius. I think I got this from him. I'm pretty certain I took this from him. You, well, let me ask you this. Um, if we encounter him and he sees me wielding it, is it going to cause any emotions? Probably. Yeah, I'll hold on to it. I mean, I, I specialize <laughs> in more of like a short sword, but I like to be, you know, a little I mean, I think bash. having options is good. Almost, you know, I like to have options as well, but definitely if it's going to make him mad, it might be the the piece we need to get him to expose himself. Well, okay. Um, well, yeah, let me uh, go ahead and take it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't need it very much. I never, I haven't once used it. Yeah, the, the, the reason that you had it was so that you could hide it in, uh, in the Fifth Dominion. While, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'll hold on to it. I'm from the Fifth Dominion. It's kind of the yeah. same. It would probably work better for you anyway. I mean, I was in the Fifth Dominion. I was born there. I am I am Nightbreed. Um, but like I said, I'm, I'm more of a get my claws dirty kind of guy. So, yeah. Anyway, I, I don't need it. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you very much, uh, D. Totally. Yes, please. I need one. Oh, oh there you go. I offer my Thank small. you. There you go. Uh, All right. So okay. I kind of just uh, roll mm -hmm. that up with my stuff and sling it over my back, holding on to it just in case I need to use it. Yeah. And if you want to attune to it, you can, we'll add it onto your character sheet there. And, and uh, it's actually a really powerful sword. People have just been kind of kicking around and not like not using it, but. Uh. You, you guys do that on your end, or do I have to do something on my D&D &D Beyond? Uh, well, you just remove it from your... Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so, Musette, you said you were going to give Aldrin a call back at yep. uh, in Squad 3 in Liverpool. Okay. Yeah, go. Um, she says, uh, Musette, is, is that you? Yeah, it's me. You doing okay? I know it's been pretty crazy this past, it, in particular this past week or so. Uh, recruiting hasn't been easy. Uh, we keep getting people that say they're interested, and then when they find out what the job is, they kind of blow us off. Or um, it's been very difficult uh, trying to fill the squad back up again. Now, you know, we we after we lost everybody in the. Uh, in in that uh hell building thing whatever you call that uh i haven't been you know squad three is still just me at this point i'm sorry i i i can imagine it's been like i said it's been very difficult um and i i just wanted to keep you informed that um hell or the hell place or whatever it is uh we sent uh we sent Chordevir to go and do some some uh, research on that uh we just got the news though that Cassius Briar uh escaped oh have you heard you... anything no uh n no I haven't <clears throat> that's that's bad news isn't he the guy that ended up uh, sabotaging that place in the first place? He's the one that caused me to lose my squad? Yeah, he is. And he's the one who uh, orchestrated all of the uh, everything that happened at the debate. Um, because, oh. you know, that was also right. pretty messy. Um, 
I know I know you weren't you weren't there, but I'm sure you saw and heard. It was pretty public. Yes, uh, you guys seem to have a lot to deal with over there. Not according to uh, supposedly, not according to uh, Squad Seventy Eight, but that's not a problem I'm going to deal with right now. Um, oh, yeah, Squad Seventy Eight. They 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 almost sent you to that one instead. I I've been having a well, it, it's been okay with <clears throat> with Seventy Seven, <laughs> as much well, as can good. be dealing with everything. Um. Did, but did you have any, I think we collected everything we could, all the information we could about hell in, um, when we were there in Africa, but, uh, did you happen to have, or did you hear of anything else about it? Because we're just trying to collect, uh, some information right now. I know they're having a similar problem trying to reassemble a squad over there that we're having is just getting people, uh, Get, uh, getting people to, to join up is difficult. And so there's just a skeleton crew keeping the doors locked over there. Uh, but you know what? I always thought that hell was just a cuckoo made up thing. And uh, it turns out it's real. Yeah, that was a surprise. Uh, we have no information either on how he escaped. Just we were just told that he did escape. Oh. Well, that yeah, that might be something worth looking into. Yeah, we definitely I'm sorry, will. I, I wish I knew more. It's just you know, we people don't really involve us that much here. We're kind of the 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 squad that's tucked away and doesn't have to deal with a lot. Yeah, that's okay. We've been sort of out of the loop. I mean, we, we hear what's going on in the mission briefings, but we're not as us usually as involved. And when right. I say we, I guess I just mean me now. Mm-hmm. Well, good luck on keeping, um, you know, on finding new members. Thank you. Yeah, if, if, uh, if you hear of anybody, let us know. We're always looking okay. for more people. Yep, we just had someone uh, swing by. He's looking for Cassius, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but if you hear anything about Cassius, you know, give me a call. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I can I can start digging around if you want. I can could just kind of ask around in the in in the within the Jericho organization and see if I can find anything. Yeah, that would actually be really great because um, uh, Bentley mentioned that, you know, uh, generally speaking, we're not too popular right now. <laughs> oh. Um, well, you're popular with me. Nah. You guys saved thank my you. life and I'll never forget it. Well, thank you for all your help. You've always been helpful. I better uh, get back. I think, I think, um, Chudavir might be close by, ah, and uh, okay. we got to break the news to him. You know how emotional he gets when Cassius is involved. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I heard he made some questionable decisions. Ah, uh, it happens. <laughs> yeah. We have all been there. Yep. Well, yeah, and, you, you know, like I said, I I always thought hell wasn't even real. So what do I know? Yeah, it once again, it was a surprise. Yeah. Okay, we'll send some people your way if we see anybody. Okay, thank you. We've got I appreciate some useless that. humans here, but they're awful. Yeah. We're, we're probably the safest, except for what happened a couple of weeks ago. We're probably the safest squad there is. Right. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Okay, bye. Okay, now hang up. Hmm. I don't know. I'm going to lay down on the bed and stay away from everybody. Okay. okay. You can go to someone else. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. And, uh, Chertavir, uh, time goes by, you know, you, uh, you make your way back and put your motorcycle into the garage and head back in. All right. I, I walk past the broken door and I'm like, uh, Hey, are you guys in here? Hey, Chertavir. Oh, Hey, this Ralph. Cigarettes. 
Oh, uh, hi. I'm uh, I'm Chudovir. I'm from the Erythemic Kesperate. I'm part of Jericho Squad 77. Uh, what's going on? Hey, uh, I'm Richard Smitty. I'm I've been sent over to assist you guys uh, in whatever in whatever way I can. <clears throat> I'm an urban bounty hunter from the fifth. Um, okay. He's well, been he, sent here to assist us. Uh, oh, assist. wait. Sent by who? Uh, um, wait, you don't know. Uh, I want no part of this conversation. <laughs> don't look at me. I'm still in my room. I've been I sent here to assist life. you in uh, returning. Okay. Precious Briar. Oh, that, uh, wait, wait, what do you mean return? Um, I've got information that he's escaped the gulfs. He's what? Escaped the gulfs. Huh. Yes, sir. That uh, that is uh, concerning and uh, surprising. Hmm. Well. Uh, wow. He's escaped the gulfs. The situation is getting worse by the minute. What can you tell um, me about Cassius? Well, he he was. Um, he was a member of this squad uh, originally, well, the previous one. He was uh, friends with Bentley, and he was a member of Jericho. Um, were you sent by Jericho? Yeah, I'm from squad okay. six. Oh, squad six. Okay. So, um, yeah, so he was a former member, and then he became, um, he kind of went rogue, and he, um, he uh, started creating this cult uh which was political and religious in nature the the aboriginal children and he started uh becoming a a, a political adversary of my brother drovo dovir um he tried to kidnap my brother he actually kidnapped my brother uh he tortured him um he wanted him to sign a, a document saying that he was dropping out of the uh political race for a uh, representative of the second dominion we rescued my brother and we um ultimately uh in a big we couldn't prove that he did it we didn't have proof but during the actual uh speech ceremony when the election was being done um he actually tried to seize power through violent means and we were luckily in the audience waiting for his move and we managed to defeat him and his uh thugs and we actually i i kind of threw him in hell it's a long story i we went to we went to the fifth dominion we we were there in a place you guys call africa apparently some fifth dominion guy created a what he wanted to call a replica of hell on earth and uh it was a long adventure, uh, the story for some other time. But at the end of it, we discovered that there were uh, what you guys call uh, demons at the last level of that uh, hellish building. And um, I ended up making a deal with the gulfs uh, because it was a creature that was very powerful. His name was Gaustus. And, uh, you know, these creatures, they seem to thrive on bartering and making deals. And uh, at the time, I couldn't afford to have Gaustus as an enemy of the squad. We just, we were kind of tired. It was at the end of a long series of fights. And ultimately, I decided to put my soul on the line to have him assist us in capturing um, Cassius Briar. So we got some infernal assistant, a big spider, uh, and we ultimately managed to fight um, Cassius Briar. And at the end, uh, I had a scroll given to me by the demon and it opened a pathway to hell. And I had promised that if he helped us take Cassius Briar because he had, uh, he had attack the gulfs basically he had cut off gaustus arm on uh, cassius briar he's a he's a very powerful uh wizard um so in retaliation uh i not only removed the political opponent of my brother who had tried to torture him and destroy us and take over this uh dominion but i also opened the portal to hell 
and I gave him to Gaustus. So now I'm very surprised to hear that he's back out from the gulfs. Um, I, I, I will need to, we will need to think about a strategy on how to find out where he is and, um, and see what we can do. And so as you said, you know, these demons like to make deals. You must have made some sort of deal to get back out. What kind, what kind of deal do you think you could have made? What would be more worth having than him? That is a very good point. That's a very interesting question. Um, is he going to try to trade his life for one of you guys? That is a possibility. I thought we had left on good terms with the gulfs. I mean, as good terms as you can have with, you know, hell. Um, but yeah, you're right. He probably promised them something. Now, what that is, I don't know. We might have to, they were trying to, um, you know, as you can see, we've been attacked uh, recently. And um, we had quite a big group of creatures from the Inovo attack us. And they were trying to abscond with my Boston Bowl. The Boston Bowl is, uh, it's a rare, very rare artifact. Um, usually, it's just kept by Erethemex, such as myself. And it is kind of a prophetic uh, artifact. So we can sometimes see things that are about to happen. Um, sometimes we see things that are happening. Um, it's it's kind of hard to be sure if we can affect the future. Um, sometimes it gives us insight on what happened in places that we were not. So I think it would be a good alternative, a good plan to maybe check out the Boston Bowl. But I think before that, um, and I appreciate you being here, but I feel like I need to fix the door and find a way to seal this location. Um, because, you know, it's our headquarters and we shouldn't have the front door open for anybody to come in. Um, so I'll, I think I'll, I'll go do that first, if that's okay. So not big themes. <laughs> no. Well, they were talking about Boston Bull earlier. I thought uh, they were talking about baked beans. I was like, yeah, of course. <laughs> no, I, I, I think you might be confusing it with something from the Fifth Dominion. This Absolutely. is like a yeah, it's a different artifact. It's made. It's a it's a very special bowl with mystical stones in it, and the stones are colored stones. And once I attune to it, and I I, I try to ask it a question the stones will start jumping up in the bowl, kind of kind of like what you Fifth Dominions would call jumping beans, I guess. <laughs> but so in a sense, you're kind of close. But the, the rocks will start jumping up and these colored rocks will eventually create images um, and you will be able to look into it and, and see, make out shapes and people and, and events. So that's how it works. Well, that's amazing. Uh, let me assist you in putting this door back together. Thank you. Thank you. I, uh, I discovered a spell, which I think at some point might have been used even in the uh, palace doors of the Autark on the top of the Imagica. So it's kind of a it's kind of a strange spell. And um, let me just, you know, let's put this door back together. So we're putting the door back together. Okay. And uh, do we need do I need to make a carpentry check, Ryan? <laughs> uh uh yeah i'm trying to think of what <laughs> performance uh, check it probably i would say a dexterity check okay for let the, me do it for the physical yeah for the the just the physical rebuilding part okay so a dexterity check and, I go and to if my you guys dexterity. are working on it together you can do it with advantage and uh whoever's got the highest dexterity can make that roll okay so i go to the top row where it says dexterity right yeah so okay, between between you and and uh, Richard, whichever of you has the, I got a fourteen. Dexterity. I got oh, a fourteen. We both got a fourteen. Oh. I see that pop up. All and, right, so cool. either one of you can make the roll and just do, roll twice and and take the higher number. Okay, my second roll is seven. Was there a first roll? Nineteen. Well, my our first rolls was both of us had fourteen. My second roll, I had seven, and he had nineteen. You guys, wait, you guys both rolled twice. Oh, yeah. 
Um, okay, yeah, one I, of you rolls with advantage, or you can each roll. One oh, time. okay. So, uh, Richard, Ricky, what was his name? You can call me Richard, Ricky, Dick. I think I'll call you Richard. <laughs> so let let Richard roll twice. So he got nineteen. Okay. Yeah, yeah. With a nineteen, you you are definitely able to rebuild the door. Um, you've got it back. You know, and and you got it back to its original, basically its original shape. It looks a little beat up, but it's uh, it's functioning. So and, I, uh, I go into my that pocket. ain't going anywhere. Yeah, so I go into my pocket and I grab like a handful of dust and I sprinkle that dust um, on on the line that at the bottom of the door, and then I make like a few motions and I give it a little squiggle with my thumb and I say, well. Now the door is locked, and uh, the only people who can open it will be the people who are currently inside the building. All right, so that's uh, that's set. Uh, make an Arcana check. Arcana. Yeah. Oh, damn. I rolled a one plus six equals seven. Okay. So uh, the, the the spell failed, um, but but, oh. but you think it succeeded? Oh no! Can I just be sure? Can I sense sense to see if it uh, if if it worked? It's it worked great. You're 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 positive. Oh no, that's not good. <laughs> okay. Jennifer, um, you're always sure of yourself. <laughs> hey, you know what? Let me just go out the door, just to be sure. Let me go out the door, close it, and then try to come in and see if... Oh, wait, no, that doesn't work, because I would be able to unlock it. And plus, you're sure <laughs> that it works, so you don't need to do that. Okay. Okay. I am a bad wizard. Okay. <laughs> that was a critical failure. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, the door is locked. <laughs> yeah. Locked from the inside. We yeah. can't get out. Well, you can. Everybody who's inside the headquarters has access to unlock it and come back in at any time. Everybody, you just lock out. Okay. That's how it works, I think. Yeah. Where's the bird? Uh, you know, uh, Jonathan kind of flew off while uh, while I was writing to the Arcana Library, and um, I'm not sure. I think he might have seen like a big pile of trash that he was going to eat from. He'll be back, I'm sure. Mm. Okay. You know how he is. He just takes off and goes do his own thing. Well, we already Maybe. ate breakfast without you guys both have of a pet. So. Sorry, what was that? I said, oh, you guys have a pet? Well, it's more not like exactly... we're his pet. <laughs> yeah, it's not exactly a pet. Um, you, you guys are familiar in the fifth with a bird called seagulls? Yeah. Okay, so as much as a seagull could be a pet, uh, except it talks and it's also it has spells. Oh, so I don't. Your team? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I would. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Member of our team, I guess you could call it that. He's um, he's got an interesting origin. Um, Ryan, do I know the origin of Jonathan? Uh... He's been kind of cagey about it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He he just kind of makes it sound like and one day I can talk. Yeah. So it's a he has a very mysterious origin. So I don't know. He came from the fifth, and he's a seagull that can talk and cast spells. He's been very useful though because he's kind of like our air support. Ah. Yeah. But it can go either way. He has a serious problem with keeping his mouth shut, and. He's often got us into trouble. Uh, that's hilarious. Yeah, I'm sure if you get to meet him soon. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. The seagull can't keep his mouth shut. That's, yeah. that's golden. <laughs> Likes to eat trash and smoke cigarettes. So you guys might have something in common. There you go. All right, I'm going to have to meet this, Jonathan. All right. So what what? Who told you that um, Cassius Breyer has uh, been released? We get... still up by the door. Oh uh, right? yeah, we're waiting. We're we're checking the integrity of the door. Okay. Well, we're just standing here watching back down, and uh, I'll, I'll tell everybody. Well, actually, they already know. But uh, 
basically it was um, Harry Demore. He gave me a call, seeing as how I'm a bounty hunter, and I do get information quite a bit from uh, random sources. Okay. But uh, he let me know that Cassius Briar has escaped uh, the gulfs. I see. And this. Okay, so Harry... I hear real quickly. I hear voices from the room, from my room. So I come out and I see. Oh, Chodevir's back. Okay. Oh, uh, hey guys, back. sorry. Yeah, I I just all of a sudden, you know, I was just talking to this guy who apparently came from Squad Six. So he was telling me he's he's talked to you guys about Cassius Briar. More or less, more than you. Okay, so sorry. Let's let's make a meeting with everybody. I guess uh, uh, where's uh, where's Bentley? Uh, Bentley's Bentley's he, somewhere. He's downstairs helping with the cleanup. Okay, so hey Richard, let's go downstairs um, into our more. We safe already went room. downstairs. Richard brought everyone back downstairs. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay, so we're already downstairs. Cool. Yep. We're because you were everyone in your room. You just came out room. of it. Okay, so. Richard here was telling me that someone, a certain Harry the Moor, told him that uh, Cassius Breyer had been released from the Gulfs. And he's raised an interesting question. Because um, you guys remember, I. Yeah. I don't know. Is, is Harry the Moor Jericho squad? So, I, Harry I don't know. Never heard of him. I don't know who that is. I don't yeah, know popular either. in the fifth in certain circles, but basically, uh, you know, uh, he he's battled these kind of demons before, from what I've been told. I've got some you mentioned, uh, protective tattoos, and uh, he's another guy you that's got some tattoos. Yeah, y'all meant you mentioned y'all shared the same artist. Um, does does this artist uh, what what do these tattoos do for you? Oh, they really up my appearance. <laughs> I see that. I'm quite envious. I would. I'm. Con I'm more. I've only known you for about an hour, and I'm already considering getting some ink done. A lot of people have tattoos. They say this one reminds me of my brother-in-law or my cat or whatever. But these are all just simply cosmetic. Um, except for like the one that I got from this guy Kaz that I was telling you about, and uh, it's kind of like a ward. A kind of kind of like a spider sense when any anything's kind of going a little bit weird. Uh, somebody's going to steal something. I kind of just have this intuition and I can feel it in my tattoos. So when this guy gave me a shout, I've heard his name. Like I said before, uh, he used to be a private eye, uh, but he gave me a shout. We basically have keywords that we listen for uh, in our network of people that I've created here. Well, at least attuned to. And uh, basically when that word came up, he gave me a shout. He let me know that Cassius Breyer has actually escaped the gulfs. And uh, that's why I've been sent here is to assist you guys. Because what I'm what I'm gathering is is you guys sent him there. He used to be your buddy. Uh, he's a powerful wizard, and uh, the demons like to make deals. So what we've surmised is that's the possibility he might have made a deal um, even more grand than the one you guys made to send him there. So this is some information that uh, I think we should review. Uh, I know that uh, Chordevere is talking about some uh, Boston Bowl. Uh, I think we should get to that. I would love to see that. Yeah, do you still have your Boston Bulls out of here? Uh, I do. Yes, thanks Good. for uh, helping <laughs> prevent it from being stolen last time. Um, yeah, so I think everybody's here. You know, Ralph, Musette, Zoe, uh, Richard, Bentley. So the, the guy that I talked to said that they got the information about Cassius from ghosts. That's all I do. Um, they didn't mention Harry Damore, but they said that ghosts told him, which kind of made, if we were in any other job, I would have hung up on them. But since we are who we are, we have to take that kind of thing seriously. Hmm. Ghosts. Okay. An interesting. And it sounds interesting. like this is very brand new information too, because I just talked to Aldrine and she hasn't heard anything about it, but she's got her, she's going to keep an eye out. So luckily okay, this good. information isn't widespread and it needs to, I think it needs to stay that way, especially after everything that happened at the debate. Yeah, that was a mess. Um, okay. Well, I think we should probably, we can fill in Jonathan when he comes back, but I think it's a good thing for us to use the Boston bowl, see if anything comes up, if we try to focus on Cassius Breyer, where he is, 
or what's happening with him. Um, I guess we can try doing the ritual and see what the Boston Bowl will show us. Okay. Um, okay. What What do you want to ask it? Um, I want to. I want to. I focus my attention on the Boston Bowl, and I think about. I want to know where Cassius Breyer is. Okay. User makes a DC 10 wisdom save or takes one point of psychic damage. Oh, okay. So that's what it was. It's not exhaustion. Okay, okay so, so yeah, make make a, a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom saving throw. All right, I got a 22. Oh, yeah. So you do not take any psychic damage. You're a, a you're a Boston Bowl veteran. Okay, so as you put the uh, you put the colored beads into the bowl and you set it kind of on the table, um, mm -hmm. they spin around and around and around, and you start to see a building, and uh, you're you you see people kind of walking back and forth. Uh, one of them, you see a giant, um, uh, what looks like a a Nullianac, but he's really tall. Uh, you see. Um, you see a, a, a guy that looks like a, a Kermit the Frog. It's like he's like four feet tall. Um, uh, you see a, your head, your Edimek, uh, and this is this is somebody you recognize. I mean, it's it's not racist to say you know them all because there are only about thirty of them. Yeah. Uh, so, but th his name is Oskalok. Oskalok. Uh, okay. Yeah. He and um, you see him there. Uh, the the view really focuses on him. Um, he doesn't look too much different from uh, from what you have seen before. I guess make a um, make a perception check. Perception check. Yeah. I've got a sixteen. Okay. Um, he. He's got a little. He's got a little bit of a more of a shifty look to him. He's never somebody that you were in agreement with, mm -hmm. because when uh, when most of the rest of the Eurydemex kind of universally uh, went took the side of the goddesses, right after the you know after the fall of Hepexamendios, he was kind of more of the opinion that the reconciliation was supposed to be the work of Hepexamendios, it was, it was for his benefit. And it, and he felt like it was used as a weapon to dis, to kill Hepexamendios instead and supplant him and have the goddesses take over. So in, in, as far as re religious views are concerned, he's been kind of, uh, he's been at odds with the rest of the community in that. So respect. he's just dumb. <laughs> That's what you're saying. <laughs> Because that so, makes no sense. Yeah, he he's kind of like that guy that mm -hmm. uh, you know when you go to the meetings, he's that guy that you try to avoid because you don't want to hear his crap. He makes up his mind about something, creates yeah. a narrative, and then that's what <coughs> happened. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and and so you see him, and uh, there's something odd about him. I mean, he doesn't he 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 it's it's him, but it's he's he seems like his features are kind of sunken and a little pale and he he's uh he's a little shifty does he look like he's been roughed up or tortured a, a, a little bit not maybe not tortured i mean he seems like he's free right now he's walking in around amongst these people uh there's another one that's a human uh you see um you see an ethac there oh, with him that's concerning um and are you letting other people look in the bowl, or are you just looking? Yeah, we're all around it. Okay. Uh, when when Bentley sees this, he goes, "You know what? That's Squad Seventy Eight. Huh. Okay. Do I see any signs of Cassius anywhere? As you're thinking that, the 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 view kind of focuses even more on Oskalok. Mm hmm. Okay. That is amazing. Who are these people we're seeing? Well, Bentley said that this apparently is Squad 78. Uh, 
which they're trying. I've never heard of them before. So do you guys know anything? What what can you tell me about Squad 78, uh, Bentley? Oh, yeah. Um, we had a, a little meeting about this while you were gone. But uh, these guys are doing the job that we were meant to do, guarding the the um, the entrance to the Fifth Dominion. Huh. Uh, what? So they... They... We've been, like, left behind in our, you know, purpose? What... what how... Who... Who made... I thought we were going to well, be the ones that were going to do that. It was naive for people to think that one squad could cover the other four Dominions. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah, fair point. And so um, they uh, they wanted us to go down there. I liked my home here. There was lots of stuff going on in his order, X, and I didn't want to move. So they're they made, on the fourth. They made another. Yeah, they made another huh. squad at the fourth Dominion. Okay. Uh, do you know any of them personally, or? Uh, they're jerks. I you know. <laughs> okay. So I, you had a meeting. Um, should we meet with them because they're the same they're, they're going to be they're going to be coming up here in three days uh oh. basically uh darther city the, the people have lost contact with darther city and oh, these yeah. guys even though we're the closest these guys took it upon themselves to sort of rub it in our face and say they're going to come up here so that they can investigate it so what's going on with darther city nobody knows <clears throat> oh, okay. Because they're sending a squad there. All right. Yeah. I mean, those guys, those people have always been kind of like doing their own thing there in the border of the Dominion. So, you know, I've heard of them, but uh... they're supposed to protect Earth from things coming through from our side and protect uh, the Fourth Dominion from things coming through from Earth. But honestly, I mean, we got London headquarters there protecting all that. So. I don't know. I, you know, they, 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 they act all big and like they're powerful, but what have they done? I mean, compared to us. Yeah, I don't know. I've just heard about them. So this came yeah. way from the top. Uh, you mean as far as creating this squad? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Because it looks like somehow the Boston Bowl is hinting that they might have something to do with uh, Cassius Breyer, or they might know where he is. Cause I was, we were trying to focus on where Cassius Breyer might be. And this is kind of showing me, I know one of the guys that, that was being shown here, his name is Oskalok and he's, you know, he's a little, he, he's a Urethamek and, uh, you know, I, I don't really trust him that much. I'm kind of surprised that he is now in a Jericho squad. Um, he's got some, orthodox views of the reconciliation and uh, hmm, I mean we've never really been well, we should... yeah sorry sorry no go ahead what were you going to say no you were literally in the mini middle of a sentence and I cut you off I apologize yeah I mean he he uh, has a pretty conservative kind of reactionary view of the reconciliation he thinks that uh, he, he, he he's I mean I don't understand why an Erethemek would be supportive of Apexamendios, but he thinks that, you know, the reconciliation was supposed to be uh, something that Apexamendios was going to do that would make everything better. And then it kind of became like, he said, he thinks that the, the maestro, you know, the, the autark um, who performed the reconciliation used it as a way to destroy Apexamendios. And he's kind of resentful about that. So, but I guess we'll find out more about what they're investigating when they come to visit us, right? I mean, it sounds like it all leads back to the Aboriginal children because that was one of Cassius's um, main interests. It sounds like that's what uh, this other Eurythmic has also an interest in. Um, so if they're going to be here in three days, maybe we should do our we should research more about the Aboriginal children. So at least we're a little bit more prepared because that seems to be the common theme with uh, the, these uh, these people. I agree. Get a head start. Chodavir, you can read. <laughs> you can read too, Ralph. <laughs> I know. Um, 
Well, uh, actually, Ryan, when I was at the library, did I find anything else about the Aboriginal children? I remember... I asked if you wanted to research them and you said no. Right. Okay. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I'm pretty sure I know most of what's going on with them, um, and I know where they come from, and I know who's who was behind them. So, but I thought that it just kind of ended at Cassius Briar because you were just like became so obsessed with Cassius that you were just like, nah, Cassius. <laughs> well, that's the way it goes over from too. Like uh, they had this regime over in the Middle East, led by Osama bin Laden. They killed him. But then the rest of his people kind of elected a new leader. So maybe it's something like that. Hmm. I remember hearing about that guy. He was on a boat when he died. No, they threw him off a boat. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. But what I'm saying is sometimes these religious uh, fanatics will elect a new leader just to fulfill that role. So regardless if Cassius has been banished to hell... I mean, the idea is still strong with their followers, I'm sure. So I think it's a good idea, definitely, to, to look into these Aboriginal children. Mm, so, yeah. so Bentley, uh, is Squad 78 coming here? Do they want us to join them in investigating the Durther city? What What are we doing? What are they? Co- why are they oh, coming here asking, for? Um, well, no, I mean, really, they just want to take they no. they want to use our transport to get huh. to 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 make a quicker trip up here because okay. it would take them two weeks to drive the Lenten way. Uh-huh. Uh, and then they want to take our truck and drive up there themselves. How long is the how long is the drive to get there to that city? About two weeks, maybe, depending on weather and everything. No, I mean, once they get here, how long is it going to take them to get to this city? Because oh. shouldn't we be investigating this city if they're so interested in it? I mean, it it's would a, take, it it would take it's a couple a of days. Yeah, yeah it's a little ways help. outside is Ordorex, right? Towards the what used to be the erasure. Actually, this would be a good time. Uh, Cherdovir, you can get out your map and show everybody. Hey, cool. Okay. Uh, well, I, I pull out my map. Yeah. Because what Richard said about them just electing a new leader, it makes the most sense. And they'll just keep doing that over and, and over, over again. And over and over, that, right, yeah. because the, the main goal is the Aboriginal children, what exactly do they want? Oh, oh here we go. Hey, we can see. Whoa, that is so, amazing. So Giggity we're Giggity. here in, in these order X, right? Uh-huh. Here's the road to Darther City. Uh, you have to That's take a, a break and camp Perfect. about halfway. So it'll take two days to get there. Okay. If Where's the Squad 78 coming from? Uh, so <clears throat> they're coming from way all the way down here. Right. Uh, oh, we have Patashkwa? Three... Yeah, they're in Patashkwa. Okay. But we have technically a three-day start if we wanted to try to get there first. Yeah. Let's do I that. like that idea. I like that idea. I mean, why should they take our truck and go there? I mean, they're not even they're not even can, willing to to have us join forces with them. I mean, can they even drive? Two squads would be better than one. No, but so, it sounds like we don't even have the same goals, even though we are all part of Jericho's squad. Their set of goals is different from our set of goals, yeah. and it all goes back to Cassius and the Aboriginal children. So you think we should go there just to find out why they're being sent there? I think yeah. that would be a good idea because that way, whatever they're planning to do over at Dirt or City, whatever they want to investigate, and it they might be there to, you know, to investigate if if uh, Cassius Breyer, aren't the Dirthers like connected to that Fifth Dominion Man of Sorrows religion that talks about heaven and hell? Bentley, I think I read something about that when I was at the library, that there are many religions on Earth, and one of them has this man who is the son of God, and, uh, we, you know, he yeah, and also there... describes as the man of sorrows. And I think the Durthers worship that kind of uh, figure, right? They did, but then they also secretly were worshiping uh, the goddesses. And... Hmm. 
Uh, and after the reconciliation, the the erasure that they were waiting for disappeared, and huh. now it's a now it's kind of like an ocean shore, uh, leading into the first dominion. Right, right, right. So well, so it used to be a camp, and thirty years ago, and now it's kind of a, a makeshift city. So here's my proposal. I'm interested in going there before they do. I'm a little suspicious of Squad 78. I mean, are, are you guys, after you guys saw the Boston Bowl, what do you think? I mean, well, we that's were trying to- con- Yeah, it's concerning to me because we're trying to find Cassius Breyer and it shows these guys. I kind of thought that they were the bad guys and then you guys say you know who they are. I- I'm getting mixed, mixed readings from that bowl. I'm getting an interpretation from the bowl that it might mean that it showed us, I wanted to know where Cassius Breyer was, right? So it showed us Squad 78, and they're going to Durther City to investigate something. So I think even though they might not be involved with Cassius Breyer's return, they might be investigating his whereabouts. So I would say we can either try calling Squad 78 just to see if they want us to tag along, see how they respond. And if they don't, we can just go to Durther City ourselves. Okay, I am not in favor of that. I think that I sh- at least maybe two or three of us should just go ahead to Durther City to see what's up because obviously you asked the Boston Bowl where Cassius was and then it shows you this person and you said that this other Eurythmic you already don't really trust and yeah. there's just a lot of information circling again about okay. the Aboriginal okay. children. So um, maybe some of us should stay here and then some of us can, oh, you know what? We have the motorcycle again. We have the motorcycle again. True. Two True. of us can go ahead forward to Durther City, not try to stir up too much trouble and not, you know, just go off the handle. Um, you know, maybe just kind of investigate quietly, very quietly and see what's up. Okay. I, I kind of t- tend to like that idea. I don't really want to call Squad 78 and let them know that we know that they're coming. I don't want to show them our hand. I'd rather just find out some info. And then if we decide we want to communicate with them after we know what's up. Okay. okay. So you want to connect with Squad 78 so you could stay here. And literally would- I think um, I think Richard should go with you, Chodavir, to check okay. everything out. I don't think that Chodavir should go because... Chodovir has flown off the handle and definitely shown everyone our hand before. Then you need to protect your Boston Bowl before I defecate in it at the house. Uh, okay. And then Richard and I will go to Dart Fuck City and uh, there. Okay. I mean, if so, you guys want to um, go take the bike, I guess. I don't want to ride a bike. Uh, I'll take you. Ralph, can can write it, right? When you you start talking about going to Darther City, you feel the the hand wrapped around you start to constrict a little bit. Uh, You you feel some anxiety uh, about all of that. Um, You see an image, an image of your mind of a, a hand and a heart and some wings. None of that means anything to me. Uh, Not yet, you, at least. You you start to feel a little bit of fear uh, coming out of the hand and kind of going through your body, and and it's hard to tell. Is it? Are you afraid, or is this coming from Baphomet? Mm, I don't know. Uh, Muset, maybe you should go. You and Richard should go. I could show Shodavir my. I could try to rebuild my my dead body for it with him. I think I'll pass. I mean, no. I can st- but no. Continue. Okay, we got to go it alone. But uh, I, I've never, you know, I'm not from here. Okay. Um. So I'm willing to go to Durther City with Richard uh, no. and try to. Okay. No. Cool. <laughs> It's just, Chodavir, you, um, I, I feel that you get a little bit distracted whenever Cassius, uh, Briar, 
uh, comes into play. Uh, but like I said, he did kidnap and torture your brother, so I understand. Uh, Bentley, what do you think? I, I, I may need to stay behind because the next thing I need to do is I need to talk to my brother about uh, Cassius. So yeah, maybe I, I need to do that. Where is okay. your brother? Oh, he's probably with the council right now. Yeah, but I can I can I can meet him there. Okay, Richard, if we take a 24 hours, we will and we still and we leave in 24 hours, we will still be approximately 24 hours ahead of 78. So, should we take some time to do as much research as we possibly can here and then leave with the motorcycle so therefore it does not tip off 78 because we have to leave the truck for them does that sound like that would work for everyone i and don't we care can if you i don't care if you leave the truck for them i hate those guys well bentley i i know i know you mentioned that uh, they're not really the nicest and more, most polite of people but considering we're not doing too well with the overall jericho squad and you know our um, our uh, I think our yeah. actions have not. They probably haven't been viewed um, very favorably by everyone else. I don't think that piling on more, um, you know, piling on more problems maybe I, isn't the best way to go. I, I was going to say I think y'all should take the truck. Because we can still have the motorcycle in case of an emergency, and that will be quicker. But the motorcycle can't even hold you. Just, That's yeah. True. Okay, so you guys take the truck. We'll figure it out with Squad 78 when they get here. Okay. I'll keep them entertained, trust me. Richard, what do you think? Or do you want to take maybe, we'll say, 12 hours instead of a full 24. We can take 12 hours to uh, rework a better plan. Because I, th I feel leaving right now, even, would still be half-cocked. Well, here's the thing, though. I mean, we don't really know. I mean, we if some of us go to Durther City, w what would we be looking for? I mean, we'd be. Well, that's why I'm saying. That's why I'm saying we take the 12 to 24 hours to research. But I'm I'm asking Richard because he's a bounty hunter, and since he's a bounty hunter, he has different he has different experiences than all of we than all of us. And you know, maybe he'd be able to give us a more informed decision as a bounty hunter. Okay, I mean, I could I could take that time to go uh, see my brother and tell him about Cassius being back. Because he obviously needs to know as quickly as possible. I have to agree with that. Uh, Short of here, I think you should go see Drovo. And I think we should uh, head out in the truck um, and leave these guys with the motorcycle. Now, I know he can't fit on the motorcycle, but that's uh, neither here nor there. And I think if we run out I think to... Uh, Ralph can fit on the motorcycle. Just not with my hand on. Is your hand a part of you, or is it a weapon? No. <laughs> well, it, it's giant rock hand. It's the hand of Baphomet. And it kind of just does its own thing. And sometimes it comes off. And sometimes it's stuck on me. And then other times it tells me to shut up in its own way. So, uh... So yeah, that's not stopping you from riding a motorcycle. Yeah, but if you ride right now, that. it feels like it kind of is stopping me from doing anything right now. It's it's not really that uncomfortable. I mean, it's it's not like it is trying, right now. Yeah, he's a symbiote. He's not trying to kill you. So does no. it grow with you? So was it small when you were small? No, no. It 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 attached itself to me actually uh, not too long ago. Not too long ago. It wasn't there when I was little. But, I mean, I was one of the last people born in Midian before, while it was falling. I wouldn't call myself a people. <laughs> but, no, that's... It, 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 uh, 
It attached itself after I left the circ after I got away from the circus, I want to say. But that's a whole other thing. Yeah, you're a night breed, right? From the Fifth Dominion. Yeah. Impressive. I suppose. I say we just go up to the Durthers and uh, just ask them where Cassius is. Direct, direct approach. Okay, so I guess. Well, I mean, I can intimidate or I can persuade him. I've got a couple sure. tricks up my sleeves. Sure. No, I understand. As a bounty hunter, I'm sure you do. So, okay, let's lock this down. Who, who wants to go to the Durthers uh, to investigate? Ralph. Is Richard that- just slams his hand into the air like a, a kid in, in school. Well, I mean, I, I, I was open to going. Uh, I mean, I suppose I, I would go. I can go. The hand What's squeezes mis- you again. What's uh, The hand squeezes it, you again. I don't think that hand wants you to go with me, brother. I really got to go to the bathroom now. <laughs> it doesn't realize where it's squeezing me sometimes. <laughs> or maybe anyway. it does. Yeah. Um... <laughs> uh, you see Zoe is, has kind of her hands on her temples and she's got her she's squeezing her eyes shut. She gets irritated easy. Zoe, you got a you got an opinion? She says that she Zoe stands up and starts kind of pushing the table off to the side. And uh, Ralph, you feel like uh, you feel like you need to help her move the table off, and and uh, yeah, I just get up and move it because she's weak. <laughs> um, Zoe starts rearranging the tiles on the transport. Oh, well, maybe something else will make a decision for us. Cool. What, what are you doing, Zoe? She says. This is something I I have to do. Um, it, you look like you're not yourself right now. Can I do like a sense magic or something? Uh, you will make it make an insight check. Okay, insight check. I've got an eighteen. Okay. Uh, y- yeah. Um. I mean, often Zoe's been kind of standoffish, but this is different. Uh, There's something different about her. Uh, She seems to have been kind of spaced out. uh, Ever since you got back, she's been kind of spaced out. You know, she was standing outside while you were working on the door, looking up at the at the comet overhead. Um, And she's. Um. She seems to be kind of lost in her, has been lost in her own head uh, for today. Okay. And uh, and now she's moving the table and she looks like she's setting up the transport to go somewhere. Is she always like this? Uh, no, really, she's actually uh, off to the side being a chatty Kathy. <laughs> so, Zoe... Where are you, where are you going right now? Where do where do you need to go? I I I just see these symbols in in my head. They won't they they I I got to I got to set them up. I got to and I'm not using her southern accent. Okay. okay. <laughs> she says that I I don't know. I just this is this is what a, a set tells me. This is what needs to be done. Um, something about healing and resurrection and and um, Ralph. What? I don't know. You're you're involved somehow. Um, and she's like frantically rearranging the tiles on the transport to to set them to some mysterious coordinates. Okay. What are you doing? Where are you? She said she doesn't know, man. I know. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Asking, I'm gonna like, what the I'm hell? Gonna, I'm gonna check out and see what she's what she wants to do and how this is gonna play out. Ah. Uh. She's she sets up the tile. Um, she grabs the uh, the 
peanut butter jar that has the ashes on it. Uh, the ashes in it. Um, and um, she... The one she found in Nidian? Yeah. She kind of looks at you all and and uh, in this sort of pleading sort of way, and she she gets on the the transport. So we see mm. her disappear. Uh, well, she's she's going to in a second, and you guys can decide if you want to go with her or not. Uh, yeah, I jump into the transport with her. Okay. What the fuck? I need to protect her if she's under some sort of influence. So. I focus on my glyph. All right. Um, is that it? Just, just cheered over here. I'm waiting to see what's going to happen. I kind of take a step back. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> unfamiliar with what's going on right now. I'm just. Right. Uh, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, we've spent the entire afternoon talking about the Dar Darver place. So, I mean, I had my heart set on that. And now we're switching gears. What the hell? <laughs> That's all we do. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, can I cast Mage Armor? Just in case. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You before you before you got on there. Yeah. Yeah, oh, by the way, did we do a, a long rest last time? So yeah, you did. Yeah. Oh, you're, okay. You're, you're good. Oh. Okay. Oh, I have not yeah, every, everybody's healed up. All right. So uh, I cast mage armor, step into the transport, and uh, kind of focus on my glyph. Okay. And the two of you, um, transport into your glyphs, and and uh, you disappear. This episode is sponsored by Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination. Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination shop is dedicated to benefiting the arts and medicine program at Texas Children's Cancer Center. Up to 50% of his proceeds will support the program where artist Don Bertram's volunteers monthly. Don Bertram is a longtime friend of Clive and celebrates and continues to be inspired by his art. He uses that inspiration to help kids through the Texas Children's Cancer Center and we couldn't be more thrilled to continue to work with him. There's a news feature video that shows Don working with the kids at Texas Children's Cancer Center and his artwork. Click the side banner at www.clivebarkercast.com to find links to the video and his Etsy shop where you can buy his prints, books, and support this wonderful program. Humanoid character artwork for Musette, Chertovir, Zoe, and Ralph by Aja Yordanova. She also created the Unbeheld in the opening title sequence. Jonathan Livingston Seagull artwork by Shayla Sackinger of Bird Ninja Art. Map of the Reconciled Dominions and Isorderex by Marco Staines at Mark Stain Art. Jericho Squad intro composition Cradle of Jersemet provided by friend of the show Ben Warren. Additional in-game music by Tabletop Audio. Bentley Widget here, smashing through the fourth wall like the freaking Kool-Aid man to tell you about our friends at Little Spark Films. Imagine you're sitting around the table eating waffles with your friends and they're all talking about this crazy new film they saw on Amazon Prime or Tubi or Plex. So you're like, yeah, it was totally scary. But you haven't seen it. And they can see right through you because you're maybe made out of glass like the Kool-Aid man. Don't be that guy. Go see The Torturer right now. Pause this thing. Watch it and come back. Support Joe and Catalina. Oops, I mean Ralph and Musette. Also, while you're supporting them, you might want to see their Hellbound Laments. Short films featuring boxes from the Pyramid Gallery and configuration boxes. You should also check out Catalina's Barker and Briefs where she reads Clive Barker books. Eureka! Eureka! Have you ever wanted to visit Fairbanks, Alaska? Catch the Northern Lights, visit Denali National Park, Chena Hot Springs, or any of Alaska's other scenic destinations? 
Come stay in our Eureka Airbnb. Use the code BarkerCast and we'll take 10% off your stay. Make sure there are cool Clive Barker decorations, books, and movies. Maybe you can even join us as we record an episode. Another great way to support the Barker cast is go to our Tee Public store and get one of our t-shirts. We've got Jose's Baphomet design, Jericho Squad, uh, Cenobium designs by Nina and Ed Martinez, Marcus's Pinhead design, and our old legacy shirts. Just go to www.tpublic.com slash stores slash BarkerCast. I'm at a loss as what what is happening now. Yo. The adventure continues. Well, that was unexpected. Bentley says, are you going to let them just go? Yeah. Can we follow them? Yeah, you yeah, you can. Should we follow uh, those guys? I don't know. Uh, you can, I, but uh, I mean, I would like to stay. I would like to stay here. If I'm not going to uh, that other city, I would like to stay here and see what's going on with Squad Seventy Eight. Even though, uh, even though Bentley uh, advises against it. Can those tiles transport people from city to city instead of, you know? Dominion, they can transport Dominion. you anywhere, anywhere in the, in the in each dominion, and anywhere you want to go inside the Imagica. So, how can we don't teleport you, to the Darthers? Ralph, you feel a pull like you really need to go. Who? Ralph. Ah, I'm going. I'm not happy yeah, about it. it. it Bethany is, is telling you that you need to go. <sighs> Shodavir is going to die if I don't go. I know he will. He will lose his stupid bowl, and he will die. Although I'm gone, I thank you for the vote of confidence. <laughs> I'm coming, too. Okay. And I dive in, and I am gone. <laughs> All right, uh, make a charisma saving throw. If you're if you're just going by yourself, you can't do it with advantage. I rolled my dice, and it's yeah. a. You got six, and then and three. Modifier. And six. Oh, six right and there. six. It's 12. a saving throw. Oh, twelve. Twelve. Okay. Uh, yeah, with a, that you know that makes the difference between you being lost forever in the Inovo or surviving. So, <laughs> you want to look. Yeah, just check. barely, but twelve. Yeah, so you you made it. Um, You made it through. Um, All right, so Uh, uh, looks like things escalated a bit. Musette and and uh, and uh, Richard are left. And Bentley. Yeah, Bentley wants to is going to stay here to make sure that the uh, that uh, it's set on receive mode, so you can come back home. Yeah, so that uh, <clears throat> that kind of escalated quickly. You know, I know yeah, I needed somebody to go with me, but <laughs> I've been to foreign lands and strange places before. I think I can handle it on my own if if you wanted to stay here with Bentley, or you can come with me. But I, I think we should definitely go check that place out. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I get. I, I will go with you. Um, sorry, I'm just volunteering. I'm, I'm sure you prefer to be alone, but. Um, I think all of our knowledge together will probably be useful. Um, and if we can just go and see what's going on with the, that city. Curb Absolutely. your enthusiasm. <laughs> I'm sorry, really fast, okay. completely out of character. What is the name of that city called? Because my brain keeps on trying to say Davros and I'm like, nope, that's Dr. Hale. Uh, Durther city. Durther. Like death, but Thank with you. an R. Durther Durther. city. Like Durther. Earth with a D. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Or Darth. Like a hearth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So you'll hear sounds like Ryan saying Darth. Yeah. Okay, sorry. But um yes. Back to character. Yes. Uh let's go ahead and we'll if we could take maybe an hour or so to pack. And then we'll head out. 
All right. So, Bentley, yeah, is that okay with you? Uh, you're, you're packing to go in the transport? No, no. we're going to go to Durser. Oh. You're splitting Richard and the party. I are going to go to Durser. Okay. Oh, I, I, I totally misunderstood that. <laughs> okay, then. Yeah, we're going to go check out that city is what I'm saying. All right. Well, I mean, that's what we've been talking about all afternoon. And I've noticed that something that we tend to do in uh, this in Squad 77 is we get really off track pretty quickly. As soon as something new pops up, we go and follow that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'd like to see what would happen if we actually just stick to the plan. <laughs> all right, It'll probably then. still get messed up, but. Hey, I wasn't going to let Zoe go by herself. We're gone, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, so yeah, you you guys take. I feel an like hour he didn't to, want her to go by herself. You guys take an hour to pack um, your stuff and to get in the truck and go to uh, Darthur City. Bentley's going to stay behind. Bentley's going to have to deal with when seventy eight shows up and they're mad that you promised them a truck and they don't have one. Well, if you're gone for three days, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's set on receive mode because the the because. The rest of the group. Yeah, you're there to, to protect back. everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that means that they could come if they knew they they could come earlier. Mm -hmm. Squad seventy eight could show up at any time if they knew that it was okay. You know that it was set up for that. Oh yeah, good point. Well, Sorry, I cut you. They don't find out. All but right, so um. So you drive uh, for several hours, and um, it's starting to get dark, and you need to pull over to... It's basically a desert road. You see kind of blasted earth. There's a small little cabin uh, about halfway there. It looks like its purpose is for uh, people to camp out in. Okay. Do you want to go in there, or do you just want to stay in the truck? Probably best to stay in the truck. Because I don't know what that cabin is for. I mean, I'm kind of hungry. I, I don't really have any food. I mean, I'd, I'd check it out, but I think if anything, if we're going to hunker down for the evening, we should at least stay in the truck so nobody steals it. Right. Um, okay, well, I will stay here while you go investigate the cabin. All right, I'll be uh, Yeah, I'm just going to have a quick looky see, see if there's anything we can grab. Okay. Um, yeah, the the cabin is is uh, pretty sparse. I mean, it has a, it's just a log cabin. It has kind of a bench, two benches that are meant for sleeping on. You know that you put your own bedroll or whatever on, uh, and um, a wood stove, and there's a stack of firewood there. Is it cold? Uh, no, well, it's starting to get colder because it's, uh, it's turning it's to desert. Night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, uh, there's not really much around. So it's uneventful. There's nobody here. Yeah, and in food. fact, the whole drive up, you didn't even see one, uh, other traveler. No cars, nothing, all the way up. You know, um, maybe if we pull pull the truck around the back we could probably come in here and make a little fire and at least have a little comfort you know, i'm gonna ask uh, what she thinks and I, I head back and propose that to her um I'm, i've been in this okay. truck for like 12 hours i know i said i wanted to stay in here but like there's a couple of like spots to bunk down in here and we can make a fire i think if we pull the truck around back you know it's up to you okay Yep, I mean, that sounds reasonable to me. Uh, I do think that I should go ahead and call Bentley and let him know where we are. We have cell phones over here. Uh, I do. Yeah, and, I, I and, have, and, and, yeah. sorry. And you, you would know that um, as far as like the Jericho squads go, you have a cell phone, but you have a, a case on the back of it that really does all of the work for you. It's a magical kind of a device that attaches to your phone. And and um, you could basically look at pictures of people on your phone and then you, those pictures create the image in your mind to help you connect telepathically, communicate. telepathically yeah, with other people. So there's, uh, can you communicate between dominions? 
Yeah. Although the time zones are usually pretty messed up. The, no, uh, I literally, all I was going to do was check in with Bentley and then I was going to let uh, the, the uh, you know, Ryan take over again. Sorry. That's what I was <laughs> going to do. That was my plan. My plan for the next several minutes was call Bentley, say, hey, we stopped off at this place, just mm-hmm. checking in, leaving it at that, and then and then uh, letting, you know, Ryan, Ryan take over. <laughs> you thought you were helping. I make, didn't make, know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> make, a, make a perception check, both of you. <laughs> What's funny is my character is not even the ADHD one, but I seem to be the squirrely one. Okay, yeah. plus six. Okay, I got 15. There we go. Sorry. Okay, 15. And, uh, Total. and what, did, what did you get? Uh, damn it, it went away. Like a one. <laughs> okay, so you didn't see anything, but uh, Musette... The whole drive up, you kind of noticed that it seemed like there was like a bird flying up overhead just on the up up above. But uh, now that you're stopped here uh, and it's getting closer, it's much, much bigger than a bird. Whatever this thing is, it's gigantic and it's starting to head towards you. Huh. Well, that can't be good. Do you see that up in the sky? <laughs> Is it a bird? Is it a plane? <laughs> um, it circles around and it seems like it's it takes a couple of flaps and then it glides, but it's sort of spiraling towards you. Do you know anything about the the native life here? Is that thing like a danger to us? It's, it looks like it's getting kind of close. Uh, I personally find it odd that it's been so quiet, and then when we stop, uh, this is showing interest in us. Maybe we should try to, like, engage it. Okay, wait, are we already in the cabin, right? Uh, I imagine that he was coming out to talk to you about what was in the cabin and that's when you saw oh it. yeah okay yeah we were in the middle of that conversation sorry yeah, yeah you, we never wouldn't be able to see it through the ceiling right right yeah uh i think that we should probably just make a run for the cabin i think we should just jump in the truck and drive to the cabin well you're parked in front of it yeah, we were parked in it. Yeah, you can I easily, you if you want to get in the action. cabin, you can easily get in, in there. Okay. All right. Yeah, I don't really want to, you know, get pooped on by this bird, or I don't want to have to kill a bird. You know, let's go inside. See if he okay. lands. As you were talking, um, it got cl- it's gotten closer. Uh, it's it's not a bird. Uh, it's the, the whole thing is, is pink and slimy looking. And it's huge. It's probably like a hundred feet long. And it uh, even and as you're going into the cabin, it continues to circle down. Should have kept driving. Man, I is that hate does that thing move fast or is it moving slow? Like, what kind of speed are we talking about? Is it floating down or does it seem to have more control over its motion? It's it's circling down like a vulture. That thing right there. Mm-hmm. So is it like long, shaped like a dragon? Uh, yeah. Yep. All right. So well, I go ahead and I, I, I get my, I pull my gun out, just to kind of feel the heft of it, like a security blanket, because you know it's kind of scary, it's intimidating. What is it doing? Okay. Um. Okay. So you pull your gun out. Um, Musad, what are you doing? I'm You've got about one turn like to get to ready. I would like to go ahead and right. I would like to go ahead and you. cast Bardic Inspiration because there's only two of us right now, and then my bonus action, yeah, is Bardic Inspiration. So it says um, he gains an Inspiration die, a D8. All right. Uh, you can add it to one di- ability for ten minutes. You can add it to an ability check, an attack roll, or a saving roll. And you guys are are sort of hunkered down in the cabin. You've pulled your gun and you've cast Bardic Inspiration. I'm pointing at the different boxes on Zoom, like you know who I'm pointing at. Uh, it, it lined up for no, me. You're, you're fine. Yeah, we got <laughs> All it. Right. 
I've never seen anything like this. This is a this is a trip. Let me give you a, a picture of this thing that you're fighting here. <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> I mean, if you would have jumped, I would have jumped too. <laughs> I wasn't going to be left alone. But I wasn't going to leave you alone. Oh. Oh, that's oh, what's heading towards us? Yep. Huh. I also pull out my sword. Y'all okay. are going to die. That's pretty big. Okay, Sorry. um, every, yeah, I've got to change this in. Why are you apologizing? This is my fault. I'm sorry. Well, because I kind of jumped in after Zoe. I mean, yeah, but I guess... Well, I thought everybody was going to jump in after Zoe. That's okay. I mean, we did what we wanted to do. It's it's going to be there um, by the next turn. Okay. I think if I did my math right, I was just trying to figure out whether your truck could outrun this thing. That's specifically why I asked how fast it was moving. So I was like, should we just drive back? <laughs> yeah, it's sort of right now. It seems like it's just kind of leisurely circling around. Uh, and you guys are inside of the cabin. Uh, so why don't you guys roll initiative? And I'm going to share this uh, roll twenty. Okay. Oh, come on. Six. Okay. 23. Okay, wow. Yeah, and I got six, which I hope is not a gonna All right. be a thing. No, it's a, so um, Richard, you get to go first. What are you gonna do? It's it's heading down towards the cabin. It doesn't seem to be bothered by the fact that you're hiding in there. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. I know I have the initiative. I think I'd, I want to try to jump in the truck and haul ass. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you, you go get in the truck and, and start it. And you can start driving away without Musette if you, if you want to. <laughs> I yell at her and I'm like, yo, let's go. Okay. Um, okay. So you're you're holding off on driving off until she can get in there or you're just driving up to her to, to let her jump in? Yeah, I start it up and I make it as uh, easy as possible for her to get into the vehicle with me so we can leave. I start uh, okay. advancing the vehicle towards her. Uh, so then, Musette, it's your turn. I'm going to try to jump in. So are, is it moving while she's having to jump in, or are you stopping and waiting for her? I, like, I step on it and then cram on the brakes right in front of her, beep the horn, I'm like, let's go! Okay, all right, so you're able to, to jump in and slam the door, and uh, it is now the, the creature's turn. It is going to swoop down and uh, make a grab at the truck. Uh, yeah, it uh, it grabs the truck, and it's trying to lift the truck off, but let's see. instead it uh, peels the roof off, and it's uh, coming back around to make another attack. Oh, there goes the truck. So it's now it's now. now it's reaching down inside to grab at. Uh, let's see. Richard. Okay, so, um, wow, that's like a thirty-three to hit. Jeez. Yeah. So it uh, it claws you. With thirty-three points of damage. No, no, that's just that's just the attack. That's the attack. Roll. Oh, that's what he rolled. Yeah, yeah thirty-three. Yeah, is, you know, against your armor powerful. class. I'm assuming your armor class is lower than 33. It is. 
considerably. Yeah. <laughs> 17. Yeah. I am so sorry, Richard! <laughs> Thir so you take 13 damage from the, the that second claw attack. That's not bad. Right. I'm at 44. Alright, and um, And it's gonna make a bite at the truck. And it missed the truck. Well, yeah, actually, who's driving? So Richard is driving. Make a dexterity saving throw. So you're, 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 whoa. Siri just made a saving throw for me while I was talking. It said the number was 10. But yeah, well, make a dexterity saving throw. You're trying to dodge, to steer the car away from the, the, um, the bite of this car. got a 12. Okay, um, twelve. Yeah, it uh, it it takes a big bite out of the front. Let's see. Or let. Ooh, yeah, it takes it, it pulls the hood off of the front of the truck. Well, yeah. Damn. Okay, uh, now it's Richard's turn. Um, you stop to let Musette in, uh, and this thing is kind of besieging the truck, but uh, now it's your turn, and you have a chance to stomp on the gas if you want to. That's precisely what I want to do. Okay. I just push my, my foot against the accelerator and advance it to the floor as quick as I can. Okay. And uh, so, Spinning yeah, my you, tires. You, you take off... Um, <clears throat> The creature's chasing after you. So this guy, and I might need a little help with the math here, but I think from what I understand, this guy can go 80 feet in six seconds, right? Because the turn is six seconds. So uh, if you do that times 10, that would be a minute. 80 times 10, right? I think sure. Is uh, 800 feet in one minute. So we multiply, uh, so let's see. We're, I'm trying to get to miles per hour. It can go 800 feet in one minute. So we would divide that Times by that six. by 60. Times it I by 60. We, I think we would divide it by 60, right? Well, if you times it by 60, it gives you how many uh, feet per hour. Then you take that total and then convert it to miles. 800 feet per minute equals 9.09 .09 miles per hour. That's what I thought too. Cause that, yeah, nine was what slow. I had gotten earlier. Yeah, so you managed to pull away. And it, are you are you headed towards Darthur City or are you headed back the way you came? In, uh, I just started driving back the way we came. Okay. All right, and and eventually it uh, it you pull away from it and it gives up and starts circling back where where it came from. That was and, close. Yeah, I thought you guys were gonna die. <laughs> you know, I kind of felt like I was gonna die just now. Yeah. And I feel like maybe we need the rest of our party if we uh, attempt this again. Maybe we should try to regroup with those guys. Yeah, it seems like uh, Derther is very protected, which is pretty suspicious. Yeah, I didn't expect that. I'm gonna. We don't have pink flying monsters where I'm from, so. <laughs> well, to be honest, you could probably run away from that monster. True. At nine well, we miles per hour. Yeah. <laughs> if you had a bike, you'd be safe. <laughs> he's big. He's not very aerodynamic, I guess. Well, well, he can go. I mean, a regular person in in combat goes like twenty five feet in six seconds, mm -hmm. and he goes eighty. So you could not outrun him on foot. But in your truck, but you, you don't. You don't run when you fight, though. Yeah, I think that's the problem. Anyway, the truck's a convertible. You, would get, you now. would get tired a lot faster than he would. 
Yeah, you can double dash, right? And then you would be going like 50 instead of... Hmm. All right, so you you uh, make your way back. You you head back to uh, Bentley. And um, that's another six hour drive or so. Or eight hour drive. Yeah, it's about a, probably an eight hour drive. In the Lessons the learned the hard way. <laughs> uh, so there aren't street lights or anything, but you have your headlights. Did you pack any gas for the trip? It's been an hour packing gas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Retroactively. Uh, yeah. All right, then uh, you you're able to make it back. I am just very shocked that uh, that thing came out of nowhere. It's been a pretty long day, um, so. I'm pretty shaken up. Sorry, Richard, for dragging you into this. Uh, let, I think that good. we should probably just go ahead and, and rest for a minute. Wanted so to heal him, and you had a long drive yeah. in the car. You had you could have done it yeah. during that time. True. Would that have been okay. considered a long long rest? In the car? Just driving in a car? No, no, not not when you're driving. You, you when oh, for a long rest, you have to sleep. You could do a short mm -hmm. rest in the car would that uh, heal me any where you could heal yourself um, yeah what is that called again I forgot second wind second wind that's it yeah so you have action surge and you have second wind and action surge just just gives you an extra set of attacks and second wind is is, uh, is the one that where you can heal yourself so if I was on a short rest then should I do this uh, second one. Well, yeah, short rest, you don't have to sleep, but you really have to be just kind of sitting there. I mean, if, if you let mm -hmm. Musette drive for a while, you can do that. No, well, we weren't even thinking about it. We were just, ex we were excited to be, you know, living and driving away and just talked about it probably a bunch. Yeah, yeah but I mean, stuff. like, the drive was six hours, so. You, you, you had plenty of time to, to stop and switch drivers if you wanted to. Yes. We'll pretend yeah, that we did switch drivers and uh, yeah. That seems like it's the easiest thing to do. So then what I what I do then? Um, yeah, because so I was I was injured. We probably would have swapped out. Yeah. So if you're doing second win, you just heal, mm -hmm. you can just heal yourself by that much. You just roll roll the, the hit points and we'll add those to your self. You got a D ten. Oh, I can do it on that app. And it's 1d10 plus 7, so I got 10, because I rolled a 3. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you get 10 hit points back. I think that's more than you got hurt, isn't it? I got hurt 13. Oh, okay. So you're pretty so close. I'm, I'm still down a little bit, got a headache. All right. Um, yeah, we'll stop there. And we'll have to pick this up next time with, I guess, only part of the group again. When is next time? <laughs> so I, I guess I, uh, I, I rolled to see if it pull, was going to pull the engine out with the hood, but it didn't. Thank, thank goodness. goodness. <laughs> I was going to, if that would have happened, I was going to try to find some way to use the truck as a bomb and like shoot the gas tank to explode. Oh, it on the yeah, there you go. Ryan, I have to say, it, you're a sadist dungeon master. I am not a, you guys put me I in think that. Ryan's position. pretty nice. I was, oh, yeah, shit. you just, I was you just wait until, until we see how you guys do next uh, time with only three work. of you there. Uh, two. <laughs> Uh, and and Lori had nothing to do with it. Now yeah. you guys put her in that position. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you have subscribed. You can find the Clive Barker podcast wherever you find audio. 
Show notes for this episode, as well as news and reviews, can be found at our website at www.clivebarkercast.com. The Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial podcast and blog that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. Watch for our annual Kickstarter fundraisers to get some cool stuff, and you can buy t-shirts on our TeePublic store. Go to TeePublic.com and search for BarkerCast. Thanks for listening.